Hello and welcome to Art Expression for Stress Release and Self-Reflection. My name is Kimberly Griffiths and I'm a counselor and art therapist in Colorado Springs. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you will enjoy having a time to be creative. We're gonna be doing a project today that is a process painting and we're gonna be studying dark and light. This project is designed to help you release tension, relax, and have some fun. It's super easy to do. It will only take you about an hour to an hour and a half to complete. So I hope that you enjoy this process. But before we get started, I'd like to take you through a really short relaxation exercise just to bring you into the present moment and to help you really enjoy this process. So please find a comfortable place to sit either on a chair or a couch, and start out with making sure your back is straight and your shoulders are down, and just breathe nice, full, deep breaths, taking in your air all the way to your full lung capacity, and then releasing all the way out. Breathing in and breathing out. And let's do that about two or three more times. Please make sure that your arms and your legs are not crossed and that your feet are flat on the floor with your spine straight against the back of the chair or your cushion. Now bring your focus to the top of your head and notice what it feels like to have your awareness there. Slowly move down your forehead and as you breathe naturally, release any tension that you may be holding in the small muscles around your eyes and your ears. Breathe into the space between your upper and your lower jaws and relax so that your teeth are not touching and your entire head is fully open and relaxed. Now with a full breath, open your chest and again, pull your shoulders down just a little more and allow the air you take in to fully expand your lungs and open up your diaphragm muscles. Now take in a breath and as you slowly release it, move your attention from the top of your spine all the way down to your sit bones. Imagine that you are lengthening your spine by breathing space into and between each vertebrae. Now with your next breath, release any tension you might be holding in your arms, letting the weight of your arms go completely into your lap or along your sides. And now your legs, breathing through your hips and moving your awareness down each leg and allowing the chair or the cushion to fully hold you. Now turn your attention back to your breathing and begin to watch your breath go in and out. Don't try to change it, simply watch your breath breathe itself. Now imagine that you are a candle sitting in a hot, sunny window. As the rays of the sunshine beat down on you, feel yourself begin to melt. Imagine that your concerns and tensions are dropping away as droplets of wax roll down the side of the candle. Feel yourself melting into a state of soft, deep relaxation. Let go and give in to the warmth of the sun and the inevitability of your melting as you release all mental and bodily tension and sink into a state of soft, deep relaxation. 
Bring your attention back to your breathing, noticing your natural flow of breathing in and out. And as we move into and through our art experience today, if you start to feel any tension or tightness in your body, please bring your attention back to your breath and allow yourself to stay fully present in this experience. If any thoughts or concerns come into your mind, simply let them go and come back to the process. Now with another nice full deep breath, breathing in to full capacity and releasing slowly, slowly. Bring your attention back to where you're sitting back to your body, and when you're ready, gently open your eyes. Welcome back. Hello again. Okay, so this process today is about using color to explore lightness and darkness. You can also equate this to exploring negative feelings and positive feelings. That's really the focus that we want to um, do today. I'll show you an example of something I did recently. This is a painting where I was tapping into maybe something stressful that had been going on in my life. And then I switched to something joyful and that helped me to feel happy. As you can see, they can live side by side and can live within us at the same time. So this is really an exploration of living with our emotions, no matter what they are, both positive and negative. And there really isn't such a thing as a negative emotion. It's just emotion that passes through us. So no judgment there. So we're gonna start out with something to paint on. This is a 12 inch by 12 inch canvas board, which is Easy to find at any art supply store, but you can really use any size that you want to. You can go up as large as 16 by 20 or 18 by 24. Those are normal sizes that you can find at a store and also potentially find a frame for. But a 12 by 12 is really easy to complete something within about an hour's time. So what I'm gonna use for my paint is just some, a variety of acrylic paint colors. And you can find lots of different kinds of acrylic paint that you can pick up at Walmart or Target, Michaels, Hobby Lobby. These little sets of four I found at Michaels and are about $2 for an entire pack. Really cost effective. You can also find these paints in smaller quantities. This is a packet from Walmart that was just about two dollars, maybe three, super easy to use. And I have a variety of paints at my studio, so I found a little container with lids and I put just a bunch of different colors of paint in here and, and the lids make it easy for me to carry around and store for future use. You're also going to want a variety of brush sizes. Again, this package of Three brushes I picked up at Walmart for about five bucks. You'll want a paper plate if you do have paint in little bottles like this. If you put paint on this paper plate, you can just throw this whole thing away when you're finished and not worry about having to put this down the sink. Um, so it's really easy to just roll up and put in the trash can. And you'll also want some Definitely need paper towels, definitely need that, and some water to rinse out your brushes. I also have a pencil handy today because what I'm gonna do is maybe divide my canvas up in two. So one side will be focusing on the light colors and one side will be focusing on the dark colors. And I think I'll start out somewhere in the middle and just put a line there. You can also use a colored marker, whatever you have handy. And I think what I'll do is I'll start out with 
the light tones. So I'll open up all my paint containers and just see what colors feel right to me today. The goal here is to not go into too much analytical thought. We're not trying to create something that looks like a landscape or anything in particular that you might recognize. It's just an exercise in playing with color. All right, there we go. So for my light tones, I think I'll start out with using white. And even though I'm using a light colored canvas, the white is just a little bit brighter so that when I use other paint colors, it'll be a stark difference. When I'm using acrylic paint, I don't normally put it on too thickly, but if I do, I can always add a little water to spread it out just a little bit more. I'm not going to worry about keeping that division line visible. It's basically, I really don't even want that to show. I'm going to paint right over that. Okay. So now I think I'm going to pull in maybe some light violet. Again, keeping it really lightweight. I like being able to see the brush strokes, especially if I'm working with light tones. Probably enough of that. And then I'll bring in some pink. Again, just layering it right along the edge of the purple and going over some of it. So it has a nice blended effect. That's what I'm choosing to do today. You might want to do something completely different from that. You can even start with making shapes or different types of lines using your colors. I'll use some orange for the last of it. And I'm going all the way to the edge. So that kind of has a nice feeling of airiness to me, light and gentle. And so as a contrast, if this were to represent maybe happiness or joy to me, on the other side of that could be some sadness. So I'll start out with something a little darker That'll be a contrast to that white. And I'll pull in some blue. And I want that edge to be pretty dark there. So again, the nice thing about acrylic paint is that you can layer it. And make some nice textures in there, depending on how much paint I use. And then let's pull in, I think I actually go right to black. And I'll move back a little bit from that blue so then I can sort of blend it together. Pull back in some blue. 
There. Keeping this very loose, super easy, don't have to be perfect, just literally go with the flow. Okay, so this has a nice feeling for me in terms of the contrast between the lighter and the darker tones. But I think I might add a little bit more here in a minute. So I'm going to dry this with a, a hair dryer I keep handy so that I can layer and then the colors won't get muddy. So I can see a couple of little spots in there that are still a little bit wet. So I just use my paper towel to kind of sponge up the moisture. That's kind of a nice textural effect too. You can do a lot with a paper towel. Okay, good. So another thing that you might consider using in addition to the acrylic paint would be some oil pastels or chalk pastels or even as simple as a crayon. I have a little selection of various colors and these are oil pastels I picked up from Walmart and the whole pack was about $1.50. So very, again, cost effective. The thing I like about oil pastels is that the color stays nice and vibrant especially when I'm trying to layer on top of something like acrylic paint. So I think I'll pull in some purple and just do something kind of fun and whimsical on this part, which is the light part. Something that feels kind of airy and has movement to it. No rhyme or reason, really. <laughs> I think I'll pull in some pink. That feels kind of fun and joyful. So it's just a nice light extra touch of texture. It's really fun to use. On the darker side, I think I'll pull in something that will stand out on that. Maybe a little bit of orange on top of the blue. And for this side, if this represents sadness to me, I might do something as simple as putting something that represents tears. Let me fill those in just a little bit. I might use my black to help them kind of stand out a little more. Give some impact. So again, the goal here is to just lead with your heart, don't think too much about it, and let whatever comes forward be okay in terms of what it represents. So I hope you enjoy this process of connecting to your light side and your dark side, accepting the fact that they live together side by side within us. And 
I hope that you continue with this process and finish your piece. Thanks again for being here with me today, and I'll look forward to seeing you again. Okay, now that you've had a chance to complete your process painting with the study of light and dark, I'd like you to contemplate this following question. As you look at your completed painting, what emotions or feelings rise up to your awareness? Please consider this deeply and write your answer out as fully as possible. Thank you to Bemis School of Art and the Colorado Springs Fine Arts Center at Colorado College for allowing us to spend this time together. Thanks so much, and I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you.